try to convince your elderly grandparents autism is real. <laughs> we are responding to some more memes selected by the husband. Shall we go? Let's go. This one is posted by Autistic Joy and it says, I don't know what it is about sitting in chairs and having both feet on the floor, but it's so uncomfortable and awful and I'll never willingly do it if there's literally any other option. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. My husband is actually quite similar. He probably relates to this as well. I don't know what it is. Yeah, like I pretty much always have my legs up on the chair in all sorts of weird positions and angles and sit in ways that most people would be like, is that not really uncomfortable? And both me and my husband are quite short, so it kind of can work for us, I can get away with it. Like it must be really hard to be a tall person and to hate having your feet on the floor. Like where do you put yourself? I don't know what it is. Is it just because it's cozy and comforting or is it a like proprioception thing, which is one of your senses and it's like your body's own awareness of itself in space. Does it just feel like my legs are too far away? I need them closer, nice and safe with my torso. Neurodivergent people tend to move in packs like poorly emotionally regulated wolves. So if all of your friends have ADHD, I have some new for you. <laughs> yes, it is true. Around the time that I was getting my diagnosis, there was definitely some discussion with people from the past who were slightly ahead on their journey and they were like, oh yeah, you say you're autistic. My other friends just said they're autistic too. <laughs> if you just think about your school and you think about the, the people who are kind of on the periphery, you know, the little misfits group, mm, watch them. Not necessarily, not necessarily, but they're, they're very well could be. I really like my little misfit friendship roots that I had in the past. Doesn't mean I was always like good at maintaining it and that's the problem because often even when I was good at maintaining it and I was good at responding to messages and I did try my best, the other person could be a bit crap and it's just like a two way, e can be a problem. <laughs> but it's like that whole The Great Gatsby quote about it's okay to be a bad driver unless you meet another bad driver and it's like two people sometimes who are not always the most friendshipy people. It can be a little bit tricky but also you can have really great connections and it just becomes okay if you don't reply straight away and I, I don't know I like that why do I need to be glued to my phone every second of the day I'm an adult who has things to do you know to feel me unfortunately I cannot give you directions around the city I've lived in my entire life yes aside from the center area I don't know where I'm going no 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 someone stopped me the other day and the car slows next to you when you're walking and they roll down their window and I had headphones on as well and I'm like <sighs> and then he asked me where to go, but I knew where it was. It was really, really simple. Like even I couldn't have messed it up. So, I mean, I still worry that my directions aren't great. And I feel like I always probably look so surprised when someone speaks to me out of the blue. Like it just takes me a while to process. Like this person is speaking to you, then compute what they're saying, then try and compute answer. It can sometimes be a bit tricky. Most of the time, don't ask me for directions. When the teacher asks a question and you know the answer, but you have social anxiety. <laughs> I just always doubt myself when I know the answer. I remember this time, I think of the question was like what is this angle and the answer was it was acute and I knew it it came into my head and I was like I know it and they pointed at me and they were like Megan answer this question and I just sat there silently and just said nothing it was primary school so I was like super shy did I like kind of laugh or something or smile and he said don't don't laugh or something like that you shouldn't be laughing about that and then the answer did turn out to be acute so I was like oh I should have said it but I swear if I had said it it would have been wrong do you know what I mean? I just like to know that I'm right before I actually say something. I hate being picked on. That teacher was nasty. That teacher was why I didn't love maths because I'm not really that bad at maths. I knew the answer, mm. but he made me just hate it. He was just, mm. no, he was not neurodivergent friendly. I did not like him at all. I don't know why I laughed. Was it just like an awkward laugh? What, what was I, what was I doing? I don't know. It's weird, awkward. Reminded that ADHD, autism and other neurodivergencies are generally genetic. So if your parents are telling you your symptoms are just something that everyone does, there may be a reason for that. <laughs> Neurodivergency being genetic also makes it much harder to recognize your own neurodivergent traits because you're regularly, so regularly, regularly surrounded by family members who act the same as you do. So you don't think it's anything out of the ordinary. You don't question what you've always known. Okay, so I'm a little bit weird because neither of my parents is autistic. I'm not gonna say either of them are neurotypical. I take after other members of my family. I feel like it's pretty clear which members of the family I take after even before I knew what autism was. I was like, oh, I'm like them. <laughs> and it was very clear to me because I grew up in England, but all of the autistic members of my family live in different places around the world. They were born in South Africa and some of them are still there and some of them are like dotted around. I didn't see them for like a long stretch of time. And then I went back to see them this one time. I was, how old was I? Nearly 19. I'd been going through a pretty hard time of my life. I'd been through an autistic burnout. I wasn't doing too well. I wasn't too happy. I 
felt like, what is wrong with me? Because no one around me could really relate that much. And then I saw my family again, reconnected with them. And I was like, oh, whatever I have that makes me like this, you have it as well, clear as day. It's not my fault it's genetic. Obviously it took me another how many years to even start considering that I could be autistic, at least another five years. It gave me relief even to just think like this is not something I've done, I've not negative thought myself into this, you know that's kind of how you think if you start reading a lot of self-help books you could think it's your fault because you're just thinking too negatively, you're not trying hard enough and it was just kind of an interesting social experiment because I'd grown up not in very much contact with them at all, barely, didn't have phone calls, didn't message them, I saw them a few times throughout my life so like I know that it wasn't just that I was picking up things because I was raised by them, I could see like this is my genetics kind of thing, it was quite fascinating, I don't know any other autistic women in my family. I'm sure at some point in my heritage there was, but I don't know any of them. There could be some, you know, distant relatives who are, but I don't, I don't know them. And I think it was always a thing that they were just being men, but like, I do all the things that they do and I'm not a man so I can see like uh, no 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 it's not a masculine feminine issue it's it's an autism thing for sure because it was just like they're just grumpy men that was what everyone has got away with in my family being grumpy anti-social men and then I come along and have to mask like hell in order to survive Oh, we love being a woman. Right, my husband told me you literally just put this one in because it's Alice in Borderland. Has anyone else seen it? Did you like it? We really liked it. The caption is neuro spicy Alice in Borderland memes for autistic post teens. <laughs> Welcome to the final stage. Was I trying to do the, the voice? Why was I speaking like that? The win conditions are, the win conditions, the win conditions are, try to convince your elderly grandparents autism is real. <laughs> that links into what I was just saying. Oh yeah, I was gonna say based on the previous meme, I have actually had one family member be quite receptive and open to talking to me about it and quite interested, which is quite nice. They have been told by somebody else who has an autistic child that they think they might be autistic. So it's like, yeah, they, they've had it more than one time. That, that's been nice. It's nice to be able to talk to someone and connect. And it's just nice to see other people who are like you. It's it's validating like, like yeah, it's not, it's not my fault that I'm like this. I have a brain and it does stuff a certain way and it's all good. <laughs> Try to convince your elderly grandparents autism is real. I've been in rooms in the past where someone has said autism is not real, some people just like trains and I didn't think I was autistic at all so it's really funny now looking back but I was like yes it is and I remember standing up for it then in the past before I had any thought that it could be me. But trying to convince grandparents you just kind of accept them sometimes as a lost cause you're like okay fine move on it shouldn't be like that we should always be open to growth and whatever of course but people man people me I'm feeling stressed friend don't you worry about it here is a reassuring hand on your shoulder I feel worse now uh I feel like yeah <laughs> It could be. It could feel a little bit patronizing as well, but I know some people have a lot of touch sensitivities. I think it depends on the day for me and it depends who it is and it depends how it's done. There's a chance it might not go down super well. Win conditions. Convince a neurotypical. You fully understand their sarcasm. It just wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm good with sarcasm. I th I, she says, I think I'm good with sarcasm. I'm quite a sarcastic person. Sometimes I like respond to what someone said as if they meant it literally, but I'm kind of like continuing the joke and sometimes people think that you don't get it. Maybe, maybe. Ah, yes, I've heard of this autism. Apparently there's an autism here in these fine woods. <laughs> That's when you're first thinking you might be neurodivergent. Hmm, perhaps there's an autism here in this fine house. Maybe, maybe it's me. Unwanted social interaction, win conditions, avoid the extrovert with no awareness of their speaking volume. Oh, <laughs> I feel bad. Because I know sometimes extroverted people do also feel insecure and feel like they're talking too much. And sometimes they may have ADHD and they may have got into trouble sometimes for talking too much. And they may be very aware that sometimes, you know, they speak without thinking and, you know, things like that. I don't know, some people really do drain your energy, I must say. There are certain people where just, oh, I feel like I need a week to recover. I'm in your presence for one day. And some people, I feel like you can still hear their voice <laughs> reverberating around your head when you lie down in bed at night. Like, the, oh, that was kind of interactions that's tricky but at the same time there are a lot of extroverted people who I really like sometimes it can be lovely like someone can really carry the conversation you can ask them questions they just talk about themselves you know they're charismatic they're nice to listen to I don't necessarily always mind you know being around extroverted people I wouldn't marry one probably final game idle scrolling win conditions swipe nine times on these spicy memes like share for permanent residency I don't want permanent residency I want to go home but is it really home? And then the cards blow off the table and it... <sighs> 
If you like this meme reacting video, I have more of them. I'll leave a couple of them on screen. Sometimes my husband picks ones that I have to try not to be offended about. <laughs>